Thanks for watching and today I would like to show you a beautiful fact about polynomials that you probably didn't know. For example, consider x squared minus 5x plus 6. This you can factor out as x minus 2 times x minus 3 and therefore has roots 2 and 3. But what if instead you consider the reverse polynomial where you swap the coefficients? For instance, 6x squared minus 5x plus 1. Well, here you can pull the 6 out and you get 6 times x squared minus 5x plus 1 6, which then you can just factor as 6 times x minus 1 half times x minus 1 third, which therefore has zeros 1 half and 1 third. And notice this 1 half and 1 third the zeros of the new polynomial are precisely the reciprocals of the original roots. Coincidence? I don't think so. In fact, this is always true. And not only that, it's super useful to find roots of very complicated polynomials, like the following one. Suppose your professor asks you to find the zeros of minus 24x cubed plus 26x squared minus 9x plus 1. You would be like, no problem, consider the reverse polynomial. So x cubed minus 9x squared plus 26x minus 24. Well, notice minus 24, it's minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4. And therefore, you can factor this out as x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 4, which therefore has roots 2, 3, 4. And so, our original answer is simply 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth. Whoa, isn't that cool? Yeah. Of course, here we were a little bit lucky because this new polynomial was easy to factor out. But still, I think this is very cool. And not only that, this does have a real-life application, surprisingly, in coding theory. There's something called error-correcting code. And the cool thing is, if you have a polynomial f that generates, I believe, a cycling correcting code c, then it turns out this reverse polynomial f star generates the cyclic correcting code for the orthogonal complement c perp. And I have no idea what those terms mean, but I hope someone, one of you gets very excited about this. Mm. But of course, this brings me to my next business. Um, because here, when we change the order of coefficients, we got a new polynomial. But it turns out there's some special ones called palindromic polynomials for which the order uh, doesn't matter. For example, consider the following ones. 8x to the fourth minus 54x cubed, etc., etc. Notice if you reverse this polynomial, you actually get the same one, and those are called palindromic polynomials. And those are very neat because, for example, notice here 8 is 2 times 4, and it turns out that 2 is a root and 4 is a root. But the nice thing is for palindromic polynomials, the roots come in pairs. So we also know that 1 half is a root and 1 fourth is a root by the miracle that we previously discussed. And don't quote me on this, but I believe a palindromic polynomial of odd degree must have root plus or minus 1. So for instance, I believe x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1, it's a palindromic and has odd degree. So because, you know, of this reciprocal business, the root ha one of the roots has to be either plus 1 or minus 1. But 1 wouldn't work because you would do 1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1. And therefore, one of the roots has to be minus 1. And you can find other roots as well using um, long division, I believe. And last but not least, before I move on to the proof, there is a very famous palindromic polynomial, which is simply x plus 1 to the n. And the reason it is palindromic is because of the binomial expansion. It's just n choose k, x to the k. And by Pascal's triangle, you can actually show that it's pretty symmetric. So 
they're very very neat because of this uh, um, property and also other ones and last but not least let me show you a proof of this fact because it is super neat so just for simplicity let me show you the general proof but with uh, quadratic functions and by the way try it out with the quadratic formula it's actually very very neat because it looks like it wouldn't work but then some terms would cancel out and in fact it would work but here, consider f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c, which you can factor out as a times x minus x1 times x minus x2, which have roots x1 and x2. So in other words, suppose x1 and x2 are the roots, then you can factor it as follows. And then now consider the reciprocal polynomial. So f star, which is just cx squared plus bx plus a. And at this point, I should mention it's actually very important that both A and C uh, are non-zero. Otherwise, it, you know, um, this magic wouldn't quite work. And otherwise, you couldn't really take reciprocal of zero. That wouldn't make much sense. Then, what the trick here is simply factor out x squared and see what happens. So x squared times C plus B over x plus A over x squared, which now we can simply write as x squared times a times 1 over x squared plus b times 1 over x plus c. But notice this junk here is just our original polynomial f evaluated at 1 over x. So in fact f star it's simply x squared times f of 1 over x. And in fact this is always true even for polynomials of degree n but in this case, remember f is just this gibberish, and therefore x squared times f of 1 over x is x squared a times 1 over x minus x1 times 1 over x minus x2. And suppose we want to set it equal 0, so again, by assumption a is non-zero, but also x is non-zero because we assume that c is non-zero. So plugging in x equals zero wouldn't give you a zero for sure. And then solving for this, this automatically gives us x equals one over x1 or one over x2, which is precisely what we want because this just says the new roots are just the reciprocals of the original roots. And then we would be done. And again, I want to mention that this proof also works for higher uh, po degree polynomials. So it's the same thing, except you would factor out x to the n. But again, I invite you to uh, try out the quadratic case with the quadratic formula. It's also very neat. All right. I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.